You know when footballers have unlimited potential from a young age and are tipped to be the next big thing? It happens all the time, and it's normal. What happens when that player doesn't live up to expectations? It also happens all the time, and it's also normal. The pressures of being a professional athlete are unbelievable, and the chances of making it work are slim. That being said, what I've just described, everything I've just described, does not apply to Jesse Lingard. Jesse Lingard did make it work. Jesse Lingard is not a failure by any stretch of the word. Yet, the way people talk about him, his abilities, and his career, you'd assume he was just some Premier League flop that disappointed everybody. He's not, and we'll talk about why in this video. Having said that, he hasn't done himself many favors in how he presents himself to the public over the years. Between April of 2023 and January of 2024, he has not played a single minute of competitive football. He's been posting videos on social media of his continued training in the gym and on the pitch, which has left a lot of people wondering why he's been unattached for so long. He's reportedly declined offers from several clubs, been training with West Ham, Al Etifak, and more, and is now the subject of backhanded articles claiming that he's offering himself to the world, which he very well might be. Jesse Lingard is a very curious case. Yo, what is going on everyone? Really hope you're all doing well. I'm Tinashe, welcome back to the channel. Today, Jesse Lingard is on the agenda. I'll be upfront right now and say that I'm a big fan of his. Despite his seemingly carefree attitude on social media and on the pitch sometimes, I really appreciate the fact that he's a football player willing to express himself and not be a robot like so many others are. But as we've learned more about him over the years, it does seem as though there are deep-seated reasons for this. Born in 1992 in Warrington, Cheshire, Jesse Lingard grew up in a football-loving family, and his childhood was shaped by a passion for the sport. He began his footballing journey with the youth teams of Fletcher Moss Rangers and Penketh United before joining Manchester United's youth academy at the age of seven and impressed all the way through. Lingard's grandfather was the one who pushed him early on. He was a strong motivational force that made sure he kept working but was quite harsh at times. His family was quite sporty as his mother was a gymnast years ago, with his grandfather being known to be hard on her back then as well. According to Lingard, his mother was not a big fan of the tough love and this was a contributing factor to her giving up gymnastics, although it was potentially more than just that. Over the years, Jesse Lingard has been very open about his family's struggles with mental health, whether it's been his own or his parents. We'll touch more on that in a bit as we go forward in this video, but I thought this might be something worth considering before we really dive into his story. By the time he was 19, Sir Alex Ferguson was singing his praise for all to hear. Jesse Lingard, is going to be some player. He said this back in 2012. And he had good reason to believe this. An attacker that could play in multiple positions, fast on the ball, and a quick thinker when decisions needed to be made. He was a hard worker too. Not the biggest player, he's always been on the slim side of things, but because of that, he had to make sure he made up for that in other departments, never shying away from running the hard yards for his team. He's also very good at running into open spaces off the ball and playing small one-twos with a willing partner a skill I'd say he retained for a long time. In 2011, he was part of the Manchester United FA Youth Cup team that won the trophy and played a starring role there. This is probably the most famous picture from the day, and there's good reason for it. Ravel Morrison, the most talented youngster that Sir Alex Ferguson ever saw, Paul Pogba, possibly the most controversial Manchester United player over the last decade or so, and Jesse Lingard. Three players that were destined for greatness, according to a lot of people that were paying attention to this team back then. Also, three players that failed to live up to expectations, even failed outright in the eyes of some. Unsurprisingly, all of them present a different case study, which is why I've made videos on all three now at this point. As for Lingard, he was always highly regarded, but he was still too raw to slot into the team by the time he was approaching his late teens. And so began a long sequence of loan spells. A sequence so long that, at the time, you would think he was never going to make his way back to Old Trafford. Four different loan spells between 2012 and 2015. First came Leicester City in 2012, a season-long loan that was pretty uneventful by all accounts. Five appearances in total, 
and not all that much to show for it. He returned to Manchester United just before the 13-14 season and did really well to impress over the preseason, scoring four goals in just as many matches. However, that was not enough to convince David Moyes that he was ready. Off he was again to Birmingham City. This time, the loan spell was much more eventful. Immediately too, he didn't just score his first goal in professional football in this match, he scored his first four. This loan was a half-season loan, and despite the fact that Birmingham wanted to extend the loan, he was again sent back to Manchester United, where, again, he was an unused sub for a match or two before going on yet another loan. Brighton, this time. Louis van Gaal has a track record for giving younger players their break in football, one that spans decades. Clarence Seidoff with Ajax, Xavi, Puyol, Andres Iniesta and Victor Valdez with Barcelona, David Alaba with Bayern Munich, and of course, Marcus Rashford. Jesse Lingard was no different, with Van Gaal starting him in his first Premier League game in charge. Lingard was then injured after 24 minutes. He was out for the next five months and followed this up with a loan to Derby. 2015-16 proved to be our guy's year though. He had to wait longer than most players these days to get his shot. 23 by the time this season came along. This is why many continue to view him as a youngster even when he was fast approaching his 30s. That and the dabs, but you get what I mean. He enjoyed a great first spell at Old Trafford, scoring six goals, one of which was a winner in extra time of an FA Cup final, a volley shot that secured United's first major trophy in the post-Ferguson era, and Lingard was at the heart of it. Mourinho came in the next year and continued to put faith in Lingard, while old and grumpy pundits called for him to be dropped for his harmless, playful behavior. It seems some of the best managers in the world saw him for what he really was, a player ready to put the team above himself. Lo and behold, he scored in the League Cup final and helped the team to Europa League glory that year. He continued to build on these performances, experiencing the best year of his career numbers-wise in 1718, 13 goals and 7 assists in all competitions. In late 2017, there was a stretch of about 9 games where he was either scoring or assisting in every match. Now 25, there was a real sense that he was going to become the player Ferguson thought he would be. To be fair, his insane form only really lasted for about a third of the season and then there would be a drop-off. But it wasn't enough of a drop-off to stop him from going to the World Cup in 2018. He started in every single match, bar the third-fourth playoff as England were narrowly knocked out in the semi-finals. Jesse Lingard's stock was at an all-time high. Unfortunately, it was about to plummet. After the World Cup, Lingard regressed. There were likely a number of reasons for this. Many his own, such as inconsistency and injury, many the fault of Manchester United, such as a turbulent, ever-changing managerial situation, owners that are extremely questionable, and an overall lack of club identity. His own declining mental health, as well as that of some close family members, were far greater than many could ever know. Whatever the reasons were, Lingard was falling out of favor. Those who saw his dancing celebrations and aloof social media posts as funny were beginning to turn on him. When Solskjaer came in, his first game in charge saw Lingard have one of his best performances ever, scoring twice and assisting once in a 5-1 win over Cardiff City. But not much happened after that. Ralph Ranić never seemed to favor him either. By 2021, he just hadn't been playing football at all, for one reason or another. So it was time for yet another six-month loan. West Ham. And this loan would prove to be the best decision of his career. He was only at West Ham for six months, yet he put up better numbers than he ever had in any full season of football he ever played. Nine goals and five assists in only 15 games. He was electric for West Ham, and with only one season remaining on his United contract, it looked like he had potentially found his new home. Moyes wanted to keep him too. The only problem was that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had absolutely no intention of letting him go. I assume this was just to make up squad numbers and all because he did not play a full 90 that entire year. And then his contract ran out. He refused to go back to West Ham and instead signed for Nottingham Forest as they spent an absolute crap ton on players in their first year up in decades. But he was ultimately not very effective for them. 17 appearances the entire season, no goals, no assists. One season was up and no contract offer thereafter. And none since. Last time Jesse Lingard played a football match was the 16th of April 2023. It's been a minute. 
So why hasn't he signed with anyone? What's been making it so difficult for him to find another club? The most obvious answer is that he's too old and too expensive. 31 isn't exactly an attractive age in a young man's sport and at the same time, having Manchester United, West Ham and Nottingham Forest on your CV surely commands a pretty penny. Another explanation is that his agents aren't the best. A couple weeks ago, he fired his agents as he's been unhappy with the results they've produced. Makes sense. In contrast to the first point, money apparently is not an issue at this point either, which makes sense. He's reportedly been earning in excess of £100,000 per week since about 2017 and looks to have set up a good amount of businesses outside of football. I'd say he's likely set or doing the right things to ensure he's set. Now it seems like it's just a good old fashioned waiting game. He's only 31. I highly doubt he has a shortage of offers. The clips on Instagram are surely just to prove to anyone important that might be watching that he's staying fit. For all the hate that he gets by his non-believers, no one has ever questioned his professionalism. This is just a reflection of that, I guess. Like I said, he's not without his faults. He's made mistakes on the pitch. He did so for United and sometimes he does seem to be a little bit extra off the pitch. At the end of the day, Lingard is a very interesting case when it comes to footballers in the modern age. He's taken abuse left, right and center, even when he hasn't been playing at times. A childish non-footballer in the eyes of some. He's been a good player and has achieved more than most footballers ever will. Now, I'm not gonna lie, he's not without his faults, but to me, it seems like his treatment has been excessively harsh at times. He's been very open about how the abuse affects him, how his mother's depression affects him, his little siblings, and more. And again, we've never heard a manager say anything bad about his work ethic. The media attacks are odd, but they're also understandable. Because above everything that we've just said, he's an ex-Manchester United player after all. That's sure to elevate any sort of minor occurrence into a major scandal. And let's not forget, he was a United player during arguably the peak of the toxicity. I say arguably because we hit new peaks by the week these days. In an interview he did on the Diary of a CEO podcast, great podcast by the way, he made a lot of comments about the state of Manchester United behind closed doors. How behind the club is in so many aspects. The social media aspects, the club's training facilities, the culture of the management. It's well documented that Sir Alex Ferguson would know all of the Manchester United staff by name, including the youth players, right down to the under 10s. That culture is very far from the current setup, according to not only just Jesse Lingard. This interview was done over a year ago. And let's not forget that Cristiano Ronaldo's infamous interview went live only two months before this one. I can only imagine that within the next three to five years, we're going to be hearing a lot more X-Man United footballers come out and talk about their experiences in the United dressing room. Day by day, the words of Jose Mourinho become more and more relevant. I consider one of the best jobs of my career to finish second with Manchester United in the Premier League. I keep saying this because people doesn't know what is going behind the scenes. Day by day, the words of Cristiano Ronaldo become more and more relevant. Since since the um, Sir Alex Ferguson left, I saw not evolution in the club. Nothing changed. Surprisingly, not only the pool, the jacuzzi, even the gym. Back to the subject at hand. In my eyes, Jesse Lingard is the kind of player that really would have thrived under Sir Alex. Not as a main star or anything like that, but as a valuable member of the team. He's proven himself to not be a bad footballer at all. Even more so someone that can do serious, serious damage when deployed in the correct setup and given clear instructions. Hence why he was so good under Mourinho when fit and honestly why he wasn't that bad under Van Gaal either. I think he's just a good footballer that's really suffered from unrealistic expectations and has honestly been a victim of the situations and circumstances that have been going on around him more than anything else. But hey, that's just me. And there we have it. Let me know what you guys think about Jesse Lingard. Feel free to subscribe. Feel free to follow all the socials if you haven't. That's all for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're having a great day. Cheers and I will catch you in the next one.